I don't know about you guys, but one of the things I think of when I hear France is good wine. So I wanted to take you guys along with me to one of my favorite wine bars here in Aix-en-Provence called La Cave des Ours and introduce you to one of the owners named Maria. So follow me and let's go visit a wine bar. I'm Maria. This is my wine cave. So I ended up in the south of France because my husband is from here. Uh, Roman is from Ouen, which is just about 40 minutes from Aix-en-Provence. Um, we actually lived and worked and traveled together for about six years in other countries, including Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And then we wanted to start a project together and we thought to ourselves that it would be much easier to start a business of our own if we were near a better support system, example family. And I'm from Ohio, so when the option was Ohio or Provence, obviously I chose Provence. <laughs> so we moved here, we got married and we started this project. He is a total wine nerd. Like, he always has his nose in books or he's checking reviews, he would do blind tastings with his friends, like always going to like all of the wine shops trying to find the best stuff, things that was really interesting to him. And we also both started getting more and more into natural wine. He looked at me one day and he said, what if instead of a craft beer bar, we open a wine shop? And I said, yeah, that would be good, but what am I going to do? <laughs> because I've always worked in bars and restaurants and cafes, so I felt like my strengths wouldn't really be useful just as a caviste in, in France. So I said to him, okay, we can be a wine shop, but can I have a bar too? <laughs> and so we decided that actually a natural wine shop works really well with having a bar side because when you have clients who don't really understand the difference between conventional, organic, biodynamic and natural wines, which are all kind of different, uh, it's really good to be able to let people taste and I really like the the sharing situation where you're at the bar and I can come and I can bring you something and I can talk to you about it and I can explain it to you and then you can ask questions and it really helps to educate our customers more because natural wine is a really big thing in France in general but not everywhere so we were happy to, to be that. <laughs> There is a lot of things that separate natural wine from conventional wine. In between the two, there's organic and biodynamic wine as well. So conventional wine would be a way to grow the grapes and also make the wine with very little restrictions as far as chemicals and additives and things that are used during the farming process. So we are all familiar with the agro farming industry where they're just using a lot of herbicides and pesticides and fungicides and all the sides that no one wants inside. <laughs> um, so conventional wine can be grown like this and then there's actually, um, and this is really good, there's over 300 yeasts that can be selected from laboratories to use in the wine. There's over 49, 50 additives that you can use as well. So that would be like, let's say I have a vineyard anywhere in France, it doesn't matter, but I really want my wine to taste like a Bordeaux. So I can actually go to the laboratory and choose my yeast and I can also choose my additives and make my wine taste like a Bordeaux even if it's not from Bordeaux. So conventional wine can trick you into thinking that it's, it's showing terroir when it's really not at all. Not all conventional wine does this, but typically things that are cheap will be not necessarily expressing a terroir and more likely just a recipe that someone wanted to make to sell wine. So then the next step is organic. So there can still be really big, large organic farming. My husband and I like to say, organic is basically saying what you can't do. So you can't use any of the, the chemicals and there's only a couple of things you can use on the grapes. You can use copper and you can use sulfites. Okay, so that's during the farming process. And then during the winemaking process, you're still allowed to purchase your yeast. You're still allowed to select uh, lab yeast but they have to be organic. 
uh, and so the selection is limited, let's say. And you can still use other additives. The winemaking process is more restricted than conventional. Just because a wine is organic doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you, let's say. Uh, it's definitely better, but it doesn't make it a natural wine, for sure. So then the next step is biodynamy. So biodynamy is actually a process that is elaborate, let's say, and there are a lot of things involved and there's a specific process that you need to follow and some people find that it's very dogmatic and that it doesn't follow science. It actually follows the lunar calendar. You need to um, take the horn of a cow and put manure in it and bury it in your vineyard and you need to turn water in a certain direction. It's very cool, it's very interesting, it's very detailed, there's a lot of information. The reason that we like biodynamic isn't necessarily because we think that it's very, very, very important to follow all the steps of biodynamic. It's because biodynamic actually brings a lot of biodiversity into the vineyard. That's kind of the difference between organic and biodynamic. Then in the winemaking process with biodynamic, you can't use selected yeast. You need to use natural yeasts that are naturally present on the raisin. What that means is when there's a lot of biodiversity in the vineyard, these microorganisms actually have the ability to prosper and to be more present. So it's much easier to ferment your wine with natural yeast if there's plenty. The other thing is that you can't use nearly as much sulfates. You can use a little bit, but very, very little. And you can't use copper. The problem with biodynamy is it takes time. It's clear in the results that it does do something for the wine and it is really good. So then we come to natural wine. <laughs> so natural wine um, is actually just the winemaking process. However, in order to make a natural wine, you need to work either organically or biodynamically in your vineyard. Because in order to make natural wine, you need to have natural yeast. Uh, you need to have it hand harvested. It needs to not be filtered or any fining agents. And then the sulfites, it's like, almost non-existent. People use a very, very little bit of sulfites normally at bottling to protect the wine so that it's able to travel. So natural wine is more the winemaking process and basically what that means is you have grapes that are hand harvested and they fermented with their natural yeast and the end product is a product that expresses the terroir. If this year it's very sunny and it's very warm, your wine should taste like that. And next year if it's cold and it's rainy or it's cloudy, your wine should taste like that. And that's where the big difference in natural wine and conventional wine comes in is if you drink natural wine, you have to be ready and open-minded to what the wine is bringing to you. Because if you like the same wine every year, all the time, you can't trust natural wine to do this for you because that's not nature. Nature doesn't give you the same thing every year. Natural wine gives you what nature gives you. So the idea is a bottle of fermented grape juice with nothing else inside of it. So this is a winemaker that's actually in Bordeaux, which is an area that's really hard to find natural wine because there's so many conventional farmers. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen Bordeaux or been, but the wine, the vines are really, really close to each other. And even different winemakers, their vines actually touch. Oh, so wow. sometimes there are fights about whose grape <laughs> is on which side of the border. Yeah. Um, so if you're surrounded by people who work in conventional agriculture, really fighting to be able to make natural wine and work organically or biodynamically is important. Uh, so this wine is actually certified uh, by Biodivin, so it's uh, biodynamic and certified organic. This is one of his more interesting things. Mm -hmm. So he's actually used the Fi Gris, is the cepage, which we have, don't really hear of anymore because it's a cepage that's from Bordeaux. And he's let it macerate for a few weeks with the skin contact on and you end up with this lovely, golden, refreshing so apple. I <laughs> love it. I guess the, the best answer to that question is all of our winemakers are small-scale farming. We find it from all over France. We do have a couple of winemakers that are in other parts of Europe. We've got a few from Spain, Italy, Germany, Greece, and Austria. But for the most part, our selection is French. And we try to source direct with the winemakers whenever possible. Occasionally, we do need to go through agents. For the most part, our selection, I think, 
probably 95% we've met the winemaker personally. So typically what will happen is we will meet people at the wine fair and then we try to visit their place as well as much as possible because the meeting of a winemaker at a wine fair and meeting a winemaker in their chez or on their vineyard, it's not the same. Once you go to their place, it's a whole other story. You see them and their passion and why they're doing what they're doing. And that's another reason that I love natural wine because the person that owns and operates and creates is passionate and artistic about what they're doing and a lot of the winemakers that I talk to, they talk about their wines like they're children or you know, like just something very, very close to them. And when you drink wine with a winemaker, it's a whole other experience. It's not the same as just having a bottle at your house and not knowing anything about the story behind it. So can you go ahead and show us like what else you offer in the wine bar? Sure. So uh, something that I really love and I'm really proud of, we work with a brand of glasses. We use these ones at the bar. So if you don't have the right glass to drink your wine out of, we can help you with that. We always have cold wines and cold beer available so that you can start your apparel straight away. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of our white wine from all of France available. And then we would come to red wine. We have a very nice selection of red wine as well, and we classify that by region. So we have all of our roses, and then we have a really wide selection of skin contact or orange wine, mm -hmm. also called Blanc de Mascration here in France. Then we have a little selection of uh, wines that come from other places in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, a really nice uh, tonic that I like to use, which go well with the spirits that we sell. So we have some artisanal gins, some pastis, uh, really, really nice whiskey as well as the Cavados and the Armagnac. And then we have our craft beer. Our craft beer is from four different brewers that are here in Pobos. And then we have the big ones for when you're heading to the party. Let's nice. Say. And of course we work with Mena, the best coffee here in Provence and we couldn't do better. I know also you guys offer like vegan platters, which I love. It's all so fresh and that's like my favorite thing too to have while I'm here having a glass of wine. So we do have our food menu. We work as much as possible with local ingredients, local producers. All of our charcuterie comes from our neighbor. They're in the third generation of artisan chaktari here in Aix-en-Provence. Our cheese comes from someone who works with uh, Fromage Fermière and she ages it in the cave herself. Oh, wow. We have our, our vegetables. I actually have a primer in Aubagne who works with local farmers, mm -hmm. let's say. So I, I get all of the veg from there. Always fresh ingredients. The idea of my menu is simple. Simple ingredients that taste great with good wine. For me, my place is more a place to come with your friends and share and enjoy just a little bit of things while you enjoy wine right. rather than a pretentious meal yeah. that needs a, a big pretentious bottle. guys so much for coming along with us today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the backstory of La Cave des Ours. And uh, if you're ever in X and you want to taste some delicious wine, this is the spot to be. I'll leave all of their information in the description box down below. Um, their Instagram, uh, their website, and definitely come and taste some of their wine and have a delicious platter as well.